Hey, this is Connie. I'm jumping on right quick before my video starts to let you guys know that I did not realize there was so much background noise going on during the video that I had just filmed. And I apologize for that. I'm at my son's house and I just, I just didn't notice it. Um, and also I crinkled a bag. This bag right here, it crinkled through the whole video. Um, and I apologize for that too. And also it's a very rambly video. So if you guys wanna know a little bit about what I've been up to, you can watch that part or you can fast forward because I do show some crochet stuff at the end, toward the end. Um, and also I forgot to put pictures of my grandson that I said I was gonna put in my last video. I don't even know what position I'm sitting in, it's crazy. Anyway, um, I forgot to put them in my last video, so I will be posting some of those uh, at the end of this video. Um, but I just want to stick this on right before the video started, so I could apologize for that, uh, all the noise. Anyway, I'll see you in the video in just a second. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is Connie with Connie's Crafty Corner. And give me just a second. I'm going to fix this camera. I think I'm a little bit too close. Okay. Um, I hadn't filmed in a couple of weeks, maybe three. I don't really know when my last video was, but if any of you guys are, you know, regulars to my channel, you understand everything that's been going on in my life. So, uh, I'm going to give you a little recap and then I'm going to show you a few things that I have finished. I've actually got some crocheting done, not much, but I've got some done. Um, I'm looking down at things I'm going to show you. Um, and I'm going to be readjusting because I am sitting on the floor and Lord, this 56 year old woman don't like sitting on the floor. Um, but anyway... Um, okay, let me give you a little, a little bit of what, about what's been going on. You know, my grandson was born. We were there from Friday. Let's see. We left the following. No, we were there. We were there about a week and a half, a little, almost two weeks. It was one day short of two weeks. Okay. We, you know, she lives in Tennessee, and we're actually staying at Lone Tree, Colorado, where my son and daughter-in-law live. That's where we're staying until we move. We know where we're moving, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later. Um, but anyway, my husband actually had to go in, ahead of me the day before I left uh, due to some obligations he had. And um, I ended up having to fly out by myself on that Friday, which is no big deal. I've done it before. It's not that big a deal. But I had never done it taking a dog by myself. And I was extremely stressed because he's five months old, almost six. He's still a puppy. And he's, he's only nine pounds, but carrying him, my computer bag, my purse, everything, it was just heavy. Um, anyway, let me tell you about my ordeal. I get up to Southwest desk and we have traveled with this dog. He's been on four or five flights to, to this date. Um, and we get up to the desk and I, you know, go to pay the $95 that they charge to fly your pet. And she looks at him and says, I don't think he can fly that, uh, he's too big. Um, the case you've got him in is too big. Now keep in mind, we'd flew with him the week and a half beforehand. And, it, it's a smaller one. It's actually a really nice uh, carry for uh, airplanes, um, but he can't stand up in it. He's got really long legs, but he's only nine pounds. Keep that in mind. And I think 25 or 30 is the limit. Um, but he had grown a little bit while we were at my daughter's. Um, but I get there and they had to get special permission to let me fly with him because I had flew to Nashville with him. They were going to let me fly back to Denver, but they were not going to, they even told me that he's probably not going to be able to fly again. And I think that's crazy because I see these big dogs, not service dogs, but bigger dogs than him. It's like 20 pounds in a little crate and they don't say anything to them. So I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was, but anyway, so I almost didn't get past the first gate. Okay. I go through TSA. Everything's fine. Um, in fact, we have TSA pre-check, and it is probably the best money we've ever spent in our lives. I think it lasts several years, and it was like $85, and we've done a tremendous amount of flying due to being so far away from family. And I've got allergies, and I'm probably going to cough. <coughs> anyway, now keep in mind, my husband's always flown with me when I had the dogs. So I didn't think anything. So I get up, and it, the flight leaves at 8, 8 o'clock at night, and I'm exhausted. Um... And I get up to board the plane. I'm sitting there and I'm in line. Everything's good. I'm thinking, oh good, I get to get on the plane and I get to stick him under the seat and he's he's just went to the bathroom, he's fine. 
she looks at me and says, you've got too many carry-ons. You can't board the plane like that. You have to consolidate. And I said, okay. Um, so I stuck my purse inside the little tote thing I had my computer in. And I still had him, that, and a little bag about this big that I had his water and little bitty collapsible bowl and some paper towels and wet wipes in case he had an accident and plastic bags. And I looked at her and I said, I can throw this away, but I cannot stick it anywhere. It doesn't fit. And the poor lady felt so sorry for me, she let me go through it because I must have looked like crazy. Uh, so I get on the plane and it was a full flight, but I'm sitting in the aisle. I got Ozzy under the seat in front of me. I have, and I stuck my computer bag and the little doggy bag up above, um, which I've never done that before because I've always been too afraid to because I'm so short, but it was actually not hard. And so I have nowhere to put my purse. I'm thinking, oh Lord, they're gonna say something to me. But luckily there was only one seat left on that plane and it was between the girl, the lady and I. So we had that extra room. So I was able to get through it. So that went perfectly. And then we got to Denver and everything was fine. But that was awful. That was just awful because I, I was so stressed over taking him through the airport by myself because he'll bark at other dogs. I mean, he's a little dog, you know how dogs bark. Um, but anyway, here may readjust again. So that was crazy. Um, but I wanted to share that story with you guys in case any of you fly with pets, beware. Um, so we're supposed to fly with him next week, but I think that's canceled and we're gonna be doing a couple days driving. So we'll see, I'll keep y'all up to date. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm gonna update you a little bit on my mom. Um, you know, when she was living with me, which right now she's with my sister and she will be coming back with me. Um, she was had a lot of anger because she had sold her house, which we had talked to her for years about. And before we ever did the final sale, which my nephew bought it, um, she said, that's fine. I think it's for the best. Not, I had no idea she had Alzheimer's at this point. I knew she had memory issues. I knew something was wrong, but I just didn't want to believe it. Um, anyway, we sold her home, which come for me if you want to in the comments. It was the best thing for her. She, it's a long story, but she was not in the best living situation and she needed to be with me. And everybody in the family agrees with that. It's just hard when you've lived somewhere for 30 years and you have to sell and, and, and succumb to accepting that you need help. So, and she struggled with that a lot when she was living with me. Uh, stayed angry because we'd sold her house and she didn't agree to it. And, and it's because she don't remember. And um, I talked to her day before yesterday and Alzheimer's sucks, y'all. Um, my nephew, who's getting married October the 22nd, um, bought the house from her and she was, we were talking and she said, you know, Michael and Riley have just got the most beautiful house. It is just gorgeous. I cannot believe they've got such a pretty house. And it is, it's a two story farmhouse um, style house. It's beautiful. And uh, I thought she was joking with me because she had been so angry about it in the past that I honestly thought she was joking with me. I said, well, gosh, mama, it ought to be beautiful. You're the one that built it. And you guys, she had no idea that that had been her house. And it, it was just, it was heartbreaking. I just could not believe that it has progressed that fast. I mean, from her arguing with me not two months ago, I mean, extreme anger. And I've been on the receiving that event, receiving end of a lot of anger, and that just goes along with her diagnosis. Um, it, it was just sad. And, um, and if anybody out there is dealing with anybody with Alzheimer's, she understands. She doesn't understand why she can't drive. She doesn't understand why she doesn't have her money with her. Um, she gives it away. She'll give it away to somebody on the street. If she's got $100 in her wallet and she sees a lemonade stand, because this happened with us when she was living with me, she stopped and gave them $100. Um, which that's fine. Mama's always been a very giving person, but she does things and doesn't realize the, the implications. Let's just put it that way. Um, but anyway, I still, you know, just continue to pray for her. And for me, um, this has been very difficult. Um, it's been difficult for a lot of reasons. You know, I love my mama. I, she's my mama. 
I love her, but you know, you know when you, people love people in different ways and mom's always been the kind, she doesn't love like I do. Let me put it that way. And it, it's, it, you don't realize it till you get older and you have children of your own, how things can be and how you feel they should be. And, but she did the best she could. She, she did the best she could by us, but um, it's just been difficult. But anyway, I don't even know why I brought that up. It has nothing to do. But um, anyway, every, everything's good. You know, my husband's been, uh, we've been moved now, let's see. Mm, I don't know, weeks now. I think we, you know, things have happened so fast. My daughter, the baby was born on the 24th of September. My birthday was the 25th. My niece, she's not really my niece, long story, but she's just like my niece. Uh, she's my first cousin's daughter. Had her baby on my birthday, the 25th. Um, I'm gonna fix myself, y'all, I'm telling you. This, getting old is not, is, health and wellness is wasted on the young. Let me just put it that way. But anyway, um, what was I gonna say? We moved to my son's house that week, the week we went home to be with my daughter for her to have her baby. And so we've been here since probably the 21st or 22nd. Um, and we're probably leaving next week. So I have just bounced around from here to Tennessee, back here. And it looks like now we're gonna be going to our final destination for the time being. I'm never gonna say again, I'm never moving again because Lord help us, that's been thrown in my face many times by just circumstances of life. And, you know, you just gotta take the good with the bad. And, you know, I, I put out there, you know, I've moved, this has been my ninth move in 15 years. And I have a lot of military folks come for me because, you know, they had to move all the time. And I completely understand that. Um, and I cannot imagine that life. I mean, I am so in awe of people who have to move as much as they've had to move. Um, but every move I've made, which I'm sure theirs too, has been um, cross country or, you know, definitely different states. And I didn't start moving until I was 40. So, and I had literally lived in the same town my whole life. So, uh, and most of the moves that I've made in the past 15 years, except for the first, has been between 12 and 18 months apart. So, it has just been hard getting settled and making friends and, you know, getting into a church and just the things that make you feel normal, you know, and settled. Um, and that's why I, I love this channel so much. I, I feel like I have friends out there. I, I'm getting teary because y'all know I'm the crier, you know. Um, when you guys comment and interact with me through email, um, and lately I have not really been good about commenting. I do try to heart everything and I always try to respond to an email. Um, I've got one that somebody emailed me a lady, it's been two or three months, a month or two ago, a real long heartfelt email. And I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've responded to her or I did. And I know I didn't follow through with what she asked. So I need to get back to that. But if you're listening to this, I don't know your name. I can't remember, but you told me some hardships that you're having and I haven't forgotten. I just literally not had time to take a breath to do anything. So um, I have to look back to see if I even responded to you, and I apologize. Um, and you know, I just completely forgot what I was talking about. You know, anybody going through menopause, if you know, you know. You know what I mean, you know what it's like. Um, but anyway, I've blabbed, and if Lord, this video is already 12 minutes long, maybe 13 by now, and I need to show you guys what I've been making. And I apologize, I'm rambling. I have had so much I've been wanting to say to you guys and fill y'all in on what's going on. I honestly just have not had time to film. Um, I did film a couple of videos. Uh, I think I did a tag and it was, I, I felt so dumb <laughs> because I was so exhausted and my dog's barking. So if you hear it, I apologize. And I was so exhausted when I filmed that video, I was not myself. So I just trashed it. But anyway, I'm gonna show you guys some things I've made. And you know, I may have just showed you this mandala blanket at the first of this video. And if I did, I apologize because I've started over two or three times and I can't remember if I showed you at this filming, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Now this is the one that I joined in with Llama Mama Kayla and several other people and I will list them down below. 
Um, and I'll be honest with you, I apologize to you ladies, but I have not had the chance to watch your last few videos, but I am going to catch up on that this week because next week's going to be crazy. Um, but anyway, this has been the most fun. I love doing this blanket. It, Llama Mama Kayla kept talking about how fun it was. I thought, well, you know, crochet's fun, knitting's fun, but she really said it was fun and she was right because every row is a different stitch. And I, I'm sure some are repeated, but I worked on this at such different gaps that I don't remember if they were. But I used Karen Simply Soft, and it was actually yarn that I had picked out to do another afghan. And you know, the sad thing of it is, I bought three skeins of each color because I had this fear of running out when I started a project, and I had to order it because it was not available locally to me. And this is the second afghan I completed, and I probably can do another afghan with what I've got. So. If that tells you how bad I am at determining how much yarn I need. Um, but this is what I completed. Okay, there's there's the edge here. And then you go on down. And I'm going to try to show you as much as I can. I did take a picture of it. Oh, sorry. I'm catching it. I'm sitting on it. There's the center. And there it goes all the way down. And you guys, I absolutely love it. I love the colors. I love the way it turned out. And I did not stress about it. I'm one of these kind that usually try to overthink which color went next. But you know, I just picked it up and I thought, well, if it's kind of light going through here, I'll throw a dark in. Or if I think it needs more, you know, brightness or whatever, I'll throw that in. And I, that's how I did it. The only two colors I don't like next to each other is the pink and the blue. Um, I just don't like that, but you know, in the whole scope of the blanket, I don't think it matters. So that's one thing I finished. I'm extremely excited that I got that finished. Um, the other thing is we're going to be moving into a new home, um, or new to us probably in the next couple of months. And I always like to have new dishcloths and I sometimes get new towels, not always. Cause you know, like I said, I've moved about every year and you don't need new towels every year, or at least I don't but I love new dishcloths. And so I thought I'm gonna start making some and I started making these a couple days ago. Let's see how many I've gotten. Um, and what I did is I got one color of every skein of dishy dishcloth, cause I've never actually made any with the dishy um, that I had and I have been making, you know, till they run out. Okay, let me see how much was left. I've got my little bag here. Oh, and I got to tell you another story about Southwest, who have been wonderful, but I just got to tell you something that's happened. <clears throat> um, anyway, it's the schemes like this. And see the Dishy Multi, and this one's actually in uh, Fish Friendship Bracelet. And this is too bright for you guys to see. But anyway, when I do two, three dishcloths with 26 stitches, no, 25 stitches starting out, and I do... I do, it's supposed to be a, a single crochet and a double crochet, but I do a single crochet and a half double because it's just quicker for me. And um, this is what they turn out like. I like this size. I don't want them really big and I want them just big enough. So my hand, as you can see, it's just a little bigger than my hand. Um, but I love this size and I do it till it's just square. And what I'll do is, this is how sophisticated my measuring is. I'll just hold it up to the other one and if it fits, then I've got it done. Look, this one might be bigger. Oh God, that one is, ah, that's hysterical. I wonder if that one's the bigger one or, yep. I shorted this one. This was the first set I did, but anyway, it's a dish called, who cares? But anyway, I'm, these are what I've completed so far. I've just worked on two, I finished two balls and I started, I've got two done. No, here's another one of that other one. And then I've got this one out of the next skein. Um, and this is what I got left. I think I've actually got two. Yeah, I've got two out of this one already. And so I've got, I'm gonna make one more and that'll finish up that. And what I'm gonna do with all the scraps is just make scrappy ones. Um, I'm mad that I made that one too little. I hate that I did that. Cause you know, it drives me crazy even though it's just a dishcloth. But this is what I have left. And you know, I thought I, if I had my scales, I would weigh it to see if I, how much I could probably get. I make it do half 
and then half, you know, have them like half and half, but we'll see. Anyway, I got that done, and I have been working on this. Um, I brought this out a long time ago and showed you guys, and I think I've started this over, this is probably my seventh or eighth time. And it's, I don't know why, because it's not even a hard thing, but I started this when I first started knitting, and I was dropping stitches like crazy. But it's, and I can't even remember, I think it's the pickle jar scarf or something like that. What it is basically is you buy a mason jar, and I've showed you guys this, and I hope I can find how to tag it, because I know she still sells it. And you get a whole bunch of these little, I think they're 10 gram skeins. Just see these? And you just are supposed to cast on 120 stitches and just start and make, it makes like a tubular scarf. Well, I had, like I say, made this a million times. So I just sat down one night and I thought, I'm just gonna start casting on. I come up with 139 stitches and no, I'm not taking it out and starting it over. If it's gonna be shorter, it's shorter, it's no big deal. I'm thinking about turning into an infinity scarf anyway. So, but I love this. I love scrappy projects. I love them. Um, and I got this done pretty quick. I was trying to do a color or two a day while I was at my daughter's. And I actually worked on my blanket while I was at my daughter's. Um, but I gotta tell you something funny. And then I wanna show you something to get y'all's ideas. Um, sorry, this one's gonna be a little bit longer. I hope you guys have got something to drink or up clean the house and just listen to me if you want to. Um, <coughs> Southwest. I decided both there and back to check my bag because I had this full of crochet and knitting, and it was stuffed full, and it was very heavy. And on the way there, we could have, my husband, you know, I would have had the room to carry it on and put it overhead. Um, but on the way there, I knew, I, but they suggested, why don't you just check it? So I did, and it worked out just fine. Well, we landed in Denver last Thursday at about 10.30 or so, and I was exhausted. I had been at my daughter's all week, didn't sleep. You know, you're not in your own bed, and I'm not in my own bed here, so let me not tell you anything. Um, and I grabbed my luggage, because my husband was actually meeting me there, flying in on a different flight from a different destination. And I saw him, and I went and grabbed my luggage, because I had to run to the bathroom, I was about to die, and I wanted to get rid of the dog, because I had to carry him through Denver Airport, and let me tell you, that's a big airport. Um, and we got home, everything was fine, I, about an hour after I got home, I thought, oh my gosh, I left my crochet bag at the airport. I didn't even get it, didn't even think about it. I thought about a lot of things. I even had my little light hang around my neck. It was in my computer bag. I saw it, did not click to, with me. But thank goodness I called the next morning and they had it, thank goodness, because I had this blanket in it, all the yarn that went to it, I had my dish, dishy stuff in it. I had a set of knitting needles and all my crochet needles in it. It was packed. I would have died if I'd have lost it. But anyway, oh, let me give y'all a little sneak peek. Let's see. This is the junk. This is the amount of yarn I brought with me. Okay. And this is full. Let me show you. See, it's full. I hope y'all can see this because I can't see what you're seeing. But, um, you know, because we had no idea if we were going to be here a week, six months. We had no idea. No idea. So, I freaked out and packed two big totes and a trash bag full of yarn. Um, and all I've done is work on this and those other couple things. And I even brought sweater quantity for myself, thinking, oh, I'll have time. I'll do me a sweater. No. But anyway, I've rambled on, and I do seem low energy, but I've been up, didn't woke up at two, and I apologize for that. Um, now, the future of my channel, I am gonna continue to check in with you guys, but I am gonna have a, a huge move. It's Where we're going is like 21 hours from here. Um, I've gotta drive that twice. I've got to fly it once, and then we've got a wedding to go to next weekend. Not this coming, but the next. And that's in North Carolina. So I've got a lot coming up the next few weeks. You guys, I put prayers out, requests out for us finding a home. Um, everything going smooth with that. You know, the market's horrible right now. Um, and there's absolutely zero to rent that would accommodate me, my mom, and my husband in this area. I mean, literally nothing, nothing. 
about an hour away there is, but there's nothing where I'm going. So we're probably going to buy because I, I'm not even going to put it out there. I said, we plan to be there about five years, but who knows? <laughs> anyway, um, I've rambled on and I'm going to get off here because you guys, I know that I'm not making any sense. And I hope that everybody's having a great day. And I hope to be back sooner than later. Um, I'm fixing to start a new project and hopefully I'll get it done and I can get back on here and show you. So I'll talk to you guys later. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.